Okay, so scandium, um, you know, this is a homework set, so if you don't know what scandium is, you can always just look it up. But scandium's symbol is SC. So you find that on the periodic table. And um, it's right in the beginning of um, the D block in period four. So it's um, period four, group th three, and uh, atomic number 21. So we're going to write the configuration for that. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d1. And i got to remember that it goes down um, by one energy level because of the way the principal energy levels overlap when we get to the D block. Um, if you don't remember why that is, there's a nice figure in the lecture notes now that shows you how Bohr's model relates to uh, these sublevels. So take a look at that. Uh, it shows you how 4s and 3d um, relate to each other. Okay, so I just fill in the electrons from here, following the same rules, the Hun Hun's rule that they're all going to point in the same direction if they have a choice, and um, the Pauli exclusion principle that no two electrons can be identical. Um, so that's 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s2 is full, and 3d1, I can put that one electron anywhere I want because in reality, it's going to be bouncing around between all of those orbitals, so there's no particular reason to choose one over the other. Um, I can also choose to put it pointing in any direction I want. There's no, no real confinement on that electron. It can kind of do whatever it feels like doing. Okay, so then we have copper. Copper is element Cu, and it's atomic number 29, so it's kind of at the end of the D block in um, the fourth period. So our configuration is kind of similar for part of it. So we get to 4s2. Um, let's see. It's nine electrons to get to copper uh, in the D block, so that's the 3d9. And it happens to fall into group 11, which we said um, Group 11 and 6 often have the ability to promote an electron from the the S energy level, which is pretty close in energy here. This isn't like a really big gap, so they can promote an S electron up to make the f half full or full shell. So actually, our configuration here would be 4S1, 3D10. That's the stable configuration. So I want to show that in my alphabet diagram as well. Now in reality, when, when it forms this 3D10, this energy level actually goes down below 4S, but our diagram um, is static here, so we can't change that. But we do know that that's true. Okay, so we're filling up the same way. Um, let's see, 3P6, so that's full. and 4s1, 4s1 here. And now I could choose to point that up or down, it doesn't actually matter. And 3d10 is full, so you got to fit 10 electrons in this, two in each box, like that. Okay, so that's the electron configuration for copper. Um, now, when copper ionizes, because as we noted, this actually goes down in energy when, um, when you get the full shell, so the 3d would actually be somewhere down there. Um, that means that when copper loses the first electron, this is the one to go. And in fact, for metals in the D block, that is almost always true. You're going to lose your, like your 4s or your 5s, you're going to lose those s electrons before you lose any of the D block. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the configuration. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other work, feel free to send me an email.